Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to do image uploads with GraphQL and React. Now we're going to be using a hosting provider called Cloudinary to host the images. Now the reason why we want to use something like this or a different cloud provider like AWS and store it in an S3 bucket is because this allows us to basically load images really fast, like it says, and also transform the images images. So with Cloudinary, they'll let you change the width, crop the image, um, make it grayscale, and many other things to transform what your image actually looks like. So that's really powerful and really nice uh, service to use. So I already created an account and um, went ahead and got my API key and all that stuff, and I'll show you what you can do with Cloudinary. So first I'll show you a little example, and then I'll show you the code that actually makes this work. So here I have a little form. I want to create um, what I'm calling a champion, which has uh, a name, which I'm going to call this Timo. And then I can click on an image and upload it. So I'm going to upload this picture I have right here. Um, and then I'm going to submit this form. And then it takes a second to load and actually submit it. And then I see my name, Timo, and I see the image that we created. Now I can refresh this or come to this and you'll see the same image pops up. So we are saving this image somewhere and we are saving this um, in the database as well. So back to this upload, real quick how this works is what we're first doing is when the user uploads an image, we're using what's called a React Drop Zone. That gives us this little thingy right here and when I click on it, they have this little pop-up come up. And then when I hit submit, I take that file, I upload it to Cloudinary, um, and then I submit the form with GraphQL, storing the ID that Cloudinary gives me. So let's look at the code for that. So first, I created two routes here. This is the upload route, which you saw me, which has the form on it, has the upload component, and I also have the um, champion uh, route. And this just takes an ID, and it goes and fetches the um, champion for that ID. So here's the upload component, which is a form and I'm basically just storing the state of my form, a name and a file, the file being the image upload and the name being um, just the string that they pass in. And they'll notice up here I'm using GraphQL to submit the form. Um, that's where you see this and I'll show you that at the bottom. And I'm also using Axios. Axios I'm using to make a post request to um, Cloudinary and then React Drop Zone is this guy right here that creates this little component. Okay, let's come down to the render component first, and then I'll show you what all these functions up here are doing. So it's very simple. Of course, you're gonna wanna make a prettier form this, than this using CSS, but we just have an input form, um, and then on change, whenever the person is typing, that's very basic. Um, I'm basically just updating the state. So the names is, and the state here, the name field is updated as the user's typing. And then we have this drop zone component, and then we have this on drop, and all we're doing is we're grabbing um, the file. You can upload multiple files, we're just grabbing the first one that they upload, um, and you can. there's lots of different settings for this that you can change, um, only accept pictures and whatnot. And so here we're just saying update this file state with the file that the person dropped in this. Um, and then whenever the person clicks the button to submit, we're doing some interesting stuff here. So first we're grabbing the name and the file from the state, and then we're creating form data. The reason I have to do form data like this is because we're making a post request to Cloudinary, which you see is happening right here. And to make the post request to Cloudinary's API, they need it in the form data format. So we're doing form data, form data and this is basically the body of our post request, and we're appending the file, and this other thing called upload preset. Now upload preset is a Cloudinary thing. Um, this is something you're gonna wanna create. When you go to and create a Cloudinary account, you'll get what's called, um, they'll create for you a cloud name, which is what you see right here. Now I have mine in environment variables, so I'm not revealing my, uh, basically my keys. These are basically, that you can use to upload. Um, and, so yeah, these guys you're gonna wanna put in with your own strings or add them as environment variables too. 
uh, I have a .env.local file here that it's reading in automatically for that. But when you create a cloud near account, you get a cloud name. So that's what you want to set as your cloud name. You'll see it in the dashboard. And then you have to go to the settings and the upload settings and create what's called an upload preset. Um, this allows you to make unsigned requests and then whatever code they give you, you set that as an environment variable or you can just replace this with a string if you'd like. Um, so that to set that up. And then as you can see, I'm doing axios.post. I have the URL here and I'm just putting in my cloud name that's part of the URL. And then we're passing in the form data, passing in the file that we want to upload and uh, the presets. And then we're waiting for the response. Um, and then after we get the response, once we, we first upload the image, right? So this is what that's doing. Once we upload the image, we actually get an ID back to Cloudinary, an ID basically of that image. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna store that ID in our database. So I'm making a GraphQL request right here. That's what this .props mutates doing. We're getting the name, which we got from up here in our state. And we're actually storing the public ID. So we're actually not storing the file in our database, but just the ID of the file that's in Cloudinary. So that's why we're getting the response.data.publicID, and we're storing that. Um, so we get that up here from the response from Cloudinary, and then we go ahead and make our GraphQL request with that to store in the database. Then after we're all done and it's successful, we will just um, redirect to the champion page. As you can see, I'm just grabbing the ID here from the response that we just created so I know which champion to, to go grab and then here is the GraphQL I'm using to create a champion as you can see I'm just using two variables name and public ID and I'm just passing those in and I'm just asking for an ID back and I'll show you the server of how this is working in a second um, but as the server doesn't see the file at all um, react directly uploads it to Cloudinary okay um, and then as you can see, I'm just doing create, adding the mutation into the upload component. Now, this is the cool part here. This is the champion page. So the champion page or component, what it's doing is it's doing a GraphQL request. It's do, calling this get champion query. Um, and we're getting the ID from the React router match parameters. So come back over here. See how I have a four up here? I'm grabbing that with match.parameters.id, um, but what I'm doing here is I'm actually just setting the variables in because this is already an object called ID. So the equivalent of this would be that. If I went like that, that's equivalent to doing this. So all I'm doing is I'm grabbing the ID from this params and setting that as the variable. And that ID variable is what we use to grab the champion and the database. Um, and then this is the cool part with Cloudinary that I was talking about earlier, where you can actually, um, we're getting the public ID. So we're loading in the data from our GraphQL server. We're checking if we're loading. If we are, we just do this little loading dot, dot, dot. And then if we're not loading anymore, we have the data for the champion. We got the name and the public ID. We're just gonna show you the name and we're gonna go actually fetch the image from Cloudinary. Now to fetch the image from Cloudinary, we would say the cloud name and the public ID of that image. So we're storing the public ID in the database, so we just pass it here, and that'll grab the image for us. Now, that's how this is working right here, and I, I recommend taking a look at uh, Cloudinary React, that's, that, that's what we're using up here um, to create that, because as you can see, I can crop it, I can change the width, the angle, there's lots of other things you can change about this image um, to change up how it looks and what you want to do with it. So that's really nice with Cloudinary. Um, so I highly recommend trying this out and uh, playing with the image. Now let's talk about the server real quick. So the server is actually really basic um, changes and ha doesn't know anything about Cloudinary and doesn't need to. So this is my database model for champion. I have the name and the public ID, and I don't need to store anything else. So in my schema here, I have the type champion. It's just an ID, name, and public ID like you'd expect. And here is get champion. I get pass an ID, and I pass back a champion. And then right here is create champion. All I'm doing is passing a name and public ID and storing the champion. And here are the resolvers. So 
Here's the get champion. All I'm doing is calling models.champion.find1 and I'm grabbing where the ID is equal to the ID passed. And then same thing for creating a champion, very simple, models.champion.create, just based on the arguments passed. And that's all the server's doing right there. Server's not doing much. Um, all the heavy lifting is happening on React, which is nice. So as you'll see, you're not actually uploading the image with GraphQL. You upload the image and then you pass the ID to GraphQL. So that's what's happening there. So highly recommend you give this a try. Cloudinary is nice. As you can see with the pricing, they have some free versions. That's what I'm using right now is this. You can store a bunch of images on this and do a bunch of transformations, which is pretty neat. So I recommend trying them out. And remember, when you create a, you're gonna get, when you create an account to get this set up, the cloud name they're gonna give you, and you should see in the dashboard, you just need to go ahead and go to the settings and get create a upload preset to pass this here. So that's it for this video, guys. This code is up on GitHub, and the link is in the description below. If you want to check it out, run it, um, test it out. And let me know if you guys have any problems with this or have any questions about how this works. And I'll see you in the next video.